Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another live video. I think I may have um, accidentally put the wrong date on this last one when I scheduled it. The um, calendar on the live event scheduling page starts on Monday and ends on Sunday. Hey, what's up? Sir Emerald here. So I was just saying that um, I may have accidentally scheduled the wrong date when I put this in here on the scheduling for the calendar. The little calendar that they show for scheduling, it starts on a Monday and ends on a Sunday. So I just went to the last day of the week and clicked on it. So that's why it might still be saying that the, the video doesn't start until tomorrow. But here we go. We're right on this. And so it's going to be every Saturday at about the same time. So let's, um, let's get to it. I've got, um, as you may have been able to figure out, we're getting down to the wire here of um, boxes and whatnot. So I've got a Deadpool 2 here. And uh, these, I have no idea what they are. And then Spider-Man homemade suit, Rocket. Mark 47, what's this, Mask, Netflix Daredevil, R2-D2 by Hot Toys, Shades, Bones, and the Rocket and Groot set from the original Guardians of the Galaxy. And of course we can talk about anything you want to talk about. If there's a um, figure that you want me to pose, somebody had asked about posing a specific figure or whatever. Whatever you guys want, just shout out to me. So welcome to the channel. So if I don't get anything, I'm just going to grab probably this Deadpool 2 here and uh, open him up. Thoughts, opinions. Oh. Where is my knife? In comparison, I should get my other Deadpool out. So what do y'all think about the uh, Hulkbuster? Jeez. Kind of um, upset me a little bit. Some degree. I'm happy about the Jack Hammer arm that we should have got last year or whatever it was that it actually was released finally. But um, I'm not too pleased about them re-releasing the Mark 43 as an identical, I mean, it's, they're not even changing the movie masterpiece series number on it. They're still calling it whatever it was, the 278 D06 or whatever it was. I mean, they're literally produce, just cranking out more Mark 43s. Like the other times, whenever they make a new figure, they at least have the audacity to give it a new series number ah, not even this time they're just cranking it out the hulkbuster even comes with a new series number because the new hulkbuster for over 1100 bucks comes with the jackhammer hand that the first one should have come with they're called the hulkbuster deluxe so i don't know i'm not too pleased about them re-releasing the mark 43 literally as the mark 43 again so this is his um little Backdrop stand for shelves. Neat little thing. I use them occasionally. I have Doctor Strange set up with his. I 
think I'll do that with Deadpools too because I've got a lot of firearms from the Sideshow Deadpool that they made. And I've collected that one also. I have a little Deadpool shelf down here that uh, I kind of have fabricated. And because Deadpool exists in multiple universes, I figured the Sideshow Deadpool still works. You know what I mean? You don't have to be you don't have any Marvel Cinematic Universe Deadpool in order to be Deadpool. That's the whole thing about Deadpool, obviously. He's everywhere. He's in every universe. So on the original Deadpool, I bought the additional... Um, middle finger hand, which is pretty cool. Uh, it didn't come with it, but remember that was the, the big scene when Colossus had arrested him. So there's the hands that it comes with right here. I'm really happy about the Deadpool franchise that uh, they have made. It's really been a good way of doing this. There has been a lot of complaint of the Venom movie. People got spoiled, I guess, with Deadpool. So they expected Venom to have that same cheekiness. It's so funny because now they're complaining. They complain about Thor being too lighthearted. Not, uh, Thor Ragnarok. I love Thor Ragnarok. And now they're complaining about Venom not being funny enough. I don't get it. I think people are just angry that Venom wasn't the Venom that they wanted, which was the Venom that came after an interaction with Peter Parker. If you haven't seen Venom yet, I'm sorry, guys, for ruining it for you. You probably already know all these things. It's a good movie, though. Check it out. Now... Right off the bat, I'm getting a different feeling of the uniform here. Let's get some of this out of the way. There's some things, but something right in there, right? So the original Deadpool kind of has a more plastic feel to his suit. It's, uh, I don't know, it feels kind of like a, a type of a spandex. But this one feels more nylon-y. Kind of like, um, I don't know. It's more of a nylon than this. This is more of a plastic. This is more of a nylon. And both nylon and plastic are both plastics. But this one feels, I don't know different. You see they're supposed to be the same style of suit. This one they've sewn into him, you know, the uh, the little zipper fly thing there. And his Deadpool symbol is a lot shinier. Than that one, which is a, a matte finish. So, of course, you know, there's going to be differences because it's a different suit from a different movie. For instance, here we have three stripes on the silver. And here we have more like a three stripes kind of on a black in the back of his hand. This is a lot more form fitting here. And this one, it appears. Actually, 
These look to be almost identical casts, just different material. The two head sculpts here appear to be the same cast. I like his butt better here. This butt looks misshapen. Here's little Deadpool's butt is nicer. And this, my Deadpool came late. So in the original Deadpool, if you guys remember, there was um, a shipment of a bunch of them that had bad arms. And I got mine, even though I ordered it the first day it was available, mine came much later. So I don't have the bad arms. Okay, so right here, this is the same material right on the back of this knee that this is. So here's the material differences. If you guys have this Deadpool, this other Deadpool is made totally of this same material here. So you'll see what I'm talking about if you have this one, the difference in the feeling of it. Now this kind of has a metallic look to his boots. That looks kind of interesting, cool. And of course, anytime you have a suit like this, you're going to have, um, I don't know, that was my video. Are we still live here? see what happened. I'm sorry. I lost my internet on my monitor over here. Let me get this resolved real quick. Sorry about this, guys. There we go. All right, sorry about that brief technical interruption there. Um, I've seen some comments that have popped up and, and I, I missed them, so I don't know what uh, what you guys had said. But anytime you have a suit like this, you're gonna have limited mobility. So even though they may have a, a, a figure in here that is capable of moving, this one's not going to be very mobile simply because of the suit and how that goes so get this dagger out here one of the things I talked about in my little review of Den Venom was in the Deadpool storyline a little knife here in the Deadpool storyline Venom actually encounters Deadpool before encountering Spider-Man. So, he doesn't have to look like Spider-Man because he encountered Spider-Man. Venom looks the way Venom looks because that's how all those symbiotes look, where he is from. That's why Riot looked the way that he looked also. You know, this one, the body is a lot more stiffer than this one. This upper torso is really loose. No doubt about that. Guys, where are these supposed to go? I don't have any idea. The same thing came on my original Deadpool, and I don't even know where they're supposed to be. So if you have any idea, by all means, please let me know. Let's get to the rest of this box.
<laughs> they included a unicorn. Um, but I don't remember there being a unicorn in this movie. I, I remember there being one in the first movie. I don't remember there being one in this movie. There's a little unicorn. Look at these. Oh, jeez. His high heels. You know, I didn't much care for that scene. I thought it was a little more stupid than anything else. I think it was beyond stupid, to tell you the truth. Deadpool 2 figure stand. Training jersey. Well, whether I want to pose him with this training jersey or not. It was kind of funny as they kept saying, X-Men here, trainee. See how these compare with the other. All right, so there's a little difference here. So the originals have a slight curve to them. And, oh, this one does too, I guess. I just must have looked at it incorrectly. There's still a slight curve. Here's to be the same, literally the exact same packaging on these two. Same piece totally, same casting, including the knife or the sword. Um, the second one, the sword has red. Kind of his little Deadpool symbol there. The hilt's a little different. And the wrap on the handle is a little different. This one is like smooth and hard plastic. This one feels like it could be leather, which is, I imagine, what it's supposed to be manufactured out of. You have that little rib in the steel on the new one. And of course, they're both dull. The first one comes to a more of a point than the second one does. You guys can see all that. And I'm, you know, only pointing out differences. I imagine that these are very similar to how they'd be in the movie. So it's not that one is better than the other. It's simply the way that they did it in the movie. And of course they attach just as easily with a magnet, you just, I mean, just put it close to it and it'll, it'll attach right exactly where it needs to be. You don't even have to be real careful with where it goes. See if we can get this holster slid around here. Looks like it's in the wrong spot. Same pouches on him. The Sideshow one really comes with pouches. And these pouches are differently placed here. I also bought the Wade Wilson head sculpt for my uh, first one. Let's have that put away someplace. And I bought the Ferris Bueller bathrobe for the first one. I like this smaller figure stand compared to this bigger one. Sometimes the bigger one is good, sometimes it's not. I'm glad they gave us a smaller one this time. It takes up so much shelf space, the bigger one does. Firearms. See one pistol. I see two pistols. I 
and the collar. What in the world? Sometimes they put this packaging in here so small, just can't pull anything out. All right, let's see how these firearms compare. The holsters are different. So this one travels down the barrel of the firearm, and this one, the barrel of the firearm, definitely sticks out. I forgot which one I pulled out from where. Same, it's the same firearm. This is obviously the new one. And I can't tell the difference between these two. So it's literally the same firearm. Now in the movie, they do a close up of the barrel where the round is expelled. And it says something like smile or something like that. And this doesn't say anything in it. Of course, I mean, they're good at microprint, but sheesh, to be able to put that in there, I, I would imagine that would be next to impossible. So that easily slips into the holster. This one, not so easily. I wonder if it's supposed to ride up that high. I would think not. There, yeah, it takes a little more finagling. The pouch is definitely in the way of that. So it doesn't sit as naturally this time. Pouches are in the way. I imagine this side it would fit easier. I know, right? Y'all discuss it over. Figure out what you got going on there. Tell me what you want done. The cool is a fun figure. Because, you know, he exists in all worlds. Literally. Literally. He breaks that fourth wall. He communicates with you. And here's all the different eyes. And the eyes, they, they pop in and out. And sometimes they're difficult to get them to stay in. So I recommend not messing around with them too much. For that reason. In regards to things. So there's my Deadpool. And I've got the new Colossus on order. I, I have I own the original Colossus, you know, called the Steel. And I've ordered the 2.0 Steel also. So I'll be able to have those guys stored in there. And this is the little um, collar that makes your mutant powers go away that he was wearing. So this is Deadpool. Move on to something else now. Put you right here for now. Figure out exactly how to close you. Put you down here where you belong. All right, preferences, describe anything. Bad Toy Story advertisement. BB-8 and BB-9E. 
Pardon me. Literally, my dead colt just fell over and his little eyeball popped clean out. There they are. The eyeballs popped out. Where you get the Iron Man Hall of Armor fame shelf unit. Ah, so that is a Hot Toys uh, figure. Um, that's the Hot Toys one. So when they were selling these, there were three ways that you could get it. You could buy them singularly, and literally just one of them. Or you could buy the four pack, which would represent the Iron Man 2 movie, or you could buy all seven of them, which would represent the Iron Man 3 movie. And I bought all, I bought the pack of seven. It came in a big box. The box is the size of a, it was a lot larger than a refrigerator. It was a huge box. And um, that's where that came from. And they quit making those. Oh. <sighs> years ago um they're, they're um kind of a grail to find i don't know how easy or if they even can be found now they're over a thousand dollars i'll tell you that much each one of these sell for about 200 bucks a piece or so so it must be 250 at a thousand bucks for the whole set now there are companies that make other units and so this is what i have for the rest of my Hall of Armor. Let's get some light down here. And they make a uh, type of the original Hall of Armor too. The same company that makes this. They make a uh, an original Hall of Armor set also. So this is, I think, called the Toys Box 2.0. And it lights up also with a battery you know they didn't design it for um ac power which the original hall of armor has ac power and this isn't an, an exact duplicate of what they what tony had in the movie it's a good representation of it so it works they're rounded on the front so you can put in like i did the little figure bases but they come with the figure position already. And all that will light up. A little mirror in the back. And I'm going to put my Mark 41 Retro Armor in there. And I have these in order. So there's 9 right there. There's a Mark 15 Retro Armor. Mark 20 Python. 21. That's the shiny chrome version Midas. 22 hot rod. Down here is a 24 tank. Behind them, Igor is a 25 striker. And 26 gamma, 27 disco, 42 that I took the hell uh, the face out of. Uh, the 36 peacekeeper. And like I said, I'm gonna put the 41 retro armor there. So you can get those as well. And they make a, a version, I think they call it the 1.0, which you know, looks a lot like the original Hall of Armor. Well, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to get one of those, and um, it is a, a welcome addition to my collection, most assuredly. They can be broken apart, and you can display them singularly. You get the when you buy the whole set of seven. Um, the uh, actually enough to set each one of them up individually so i have one extra little piece if i remember correctly here and then they give you i think they give you three of these little uh, holographic displays that go in front of them 
Mr. Are you getting the new Hulkus? You know, I'm definitely ordering the Jackhammer arm to go with that. Because I have, obviously, a Hulkbuster. And um, it, it appears to be the exact same Hulkbuster. Literally, I was looking at the photographs of it. I was, I was making a video for the Jackhammer hand. I was going to make a video on the other two as well. And um, I'll be finishing up that Jackhammer hand video today. I made a video of the Mark VI unboxing and all the comparisons the King Arts Avengers Gantry as well. Um, it looks to be the exact same Hulkbuster. I mean, exactly. So um, when I bought my Hulkbuster, I was very fortunate to order it, you know, the day that it was available. And I got it for a lot less than what it finally came out as. And so it was what kind of is, is disappointing on the re-release because it's the exact same figure, and they're selling it for about the same price that it ended up being sold for for people who were able to order it on when when they finally ship. You know, I think it was 2015 when you could order the Hulkbuster, and then when they finally ship this year or last year, I forget now when they came, there were some that were still available, and so you could buy one. And the price that you could bought it for a handful of months ago or whatever it was. It's the exact same price that they're selling it for now, which makes it for, you know, collectors. All of a sudden you start asking yourself, what the world am I collecting this for? If they're just going to re-release it, for instance, the Mark 43. Again, exact same figure. It's not like when they re-released the Mark 4 and the Mark 6 or the Shanghai edition of it, where they literally repainted the, the Mark 4 in a different shade. So that's the Shanghai edition of the Mark IV that came out with the addition of um, the Walt Disney theme park there in Shanghai. So they re-released the Mark IV and the Mark VI and a Mark 42, and they were actually different. This Mark 43 that they're re-releasing, change in the series number. It's still exactly the same series number. So that is kind of upsetting. But yeah, I'm definitely getting them jackhammer hand. I don't have the money to have another Hulkbuster. Uh, it'd be cool to have two Hulkbusters. Pose one of them literally in the fight scene versus Hulk, which I've wanted a jackhammer hand forever, and then pose the other one in the non jackhammer hand. Let's open up this Mark 47 Spider Man Homecoming Iron Man figure. I want to get to him for a while. So we have your typical diecast packaging. This looks a little different here, but it's just, I mean, it's the same box. And the Mark 47 and the Mark 46, feature-wise or design-wise, are the same figure just a different paint scheme now they come with different stuff for instance here's the stuff that he comes with I wish that they had made these little rockets larger so like in the the new Hulkbuster we were just talking about comes with Veronica and she's six centimeters you know which is about this big that's about six centimeters right there. And Veronica obviously was large enough to entirely encase the Hulkbuster. So if you were to make her full scale, she'd probably be, I don't know, three or four feet, maybe more, maybe five feet tall at one six scale, maybe even taller than that still. I'd, I'd, I'd say probably five feet tall, just thinking about it. And we get this little thing. So there's a time, I guess, when that's acceptable because where the heck are you going to put this and it don't do anything but just hang out? When you can take the Veronica and you can just show it in the background and you get the idea, you understand what it is. But these little rocket launching things that came with this, these are much bigger. Because as a matter of fact, these are those pieces that come flying out of there. So here they are the right size. And here they are in their little storage pack. 
why didn't they give us this in this size? Just doesn't make any sense to me. Mark 46 is a super expensive now. Hope they're re-release -re -re that one as I'm a new collector. You know, I tell you, that's one of the things that is, I don't know, fun, in my opinion, and or even frustrating about this collection or this um, hobby of collecting is getting that grail. You know, one of my, I have I have a couple of grail figures and I have a couple of figures that I've not been able to get still. Um, one of them being the original Loki. But for instance, I really like these guys right here. And these are a couple of uh, a couple of my grails. So they are outdated per se by today's standards, especially with the diecast figures that have just come out. But to track these guys down for me was a process and I enjoyed the hunt and finally getting it was just I they're they're center points to my collection still they are displayed in a predominant place where I can see them easily and I enjoy looking at them and I'm really happy to have them so whenever there's a re-release it almost cheapens the the hunt, you know, it almost makes it, I don't know how to say, I really enjoyed getting these and then getting these that made it all the more valuable to me. And this is the, the Mark IV secret project and the Mark III um, gunmetal versions. And these aren't even the more valuable ones, which come with the exact same figure, only they come with a different figure stand base. And it's called the, um, One's called the uh, Silly Things. Another one's called, I think, uh, I don't remember, the Milk or something like that. So, yeah, the uh, the Mark 47, I, I've noticed that. And uh, I did get the Neon Tech. Now, oh my God, let me tell you about the Neon Tech. That one really, really upset me. So, on this Neon Tech. I really expected it to come out for San Diego Comic-Con uh, back in July, because that's when they were uh, announcing the figure, and you could buy them in Asia. And so, Sideshow, which is the distributor for Hot Toys, the official distributor for Hot Toys here in the United States, I contacted them, I said, hey, you don't have this at, Side at San Diego Comic-Con, what's going on? Sideshow literally told me they will not be getting this in the United States. I said, it wasn't going to happen. They said, they're not going to be sold in the United States at all. So if you want to get a, uh, a neon figure, you're going to have to get it from third party because they're in the United States. That's literally what Sideshow told me. And now, that see, that's not outside of the realm of believability because literally, when they re-released the Mark 42, for the Shanghai uh, editions with the Mark IV and the Mark VI, they did not offer the Mark 42 re-release in the United States. You couldn't get it, okay? You had to get it from um, overseas, third party if you wanted to get it. Same thing with this figure here I'm trying to get out right now that I'm having some difficulty getting. This was not released in the United States. The only way to get this was through um, third party resellers, which is the Mark 21 Chrome made by Hot Toys. And so when Sideshow told me that they aren't going to be getting it, and the only way for me to be able to uh, attain it was through third party, I took that as gospel truth. So I bought it third party and as you know whenever you do that you pay more for it than you are when you buy it from the actual original manufacturer so now sideshow released the doggone things and that really upset me because they told me they were not going to get it period no ifs ands or buts about it and i paid 
third party reseller value for it, then Sideshow actually gets it. Um, and they contacted me a few weeks ago asking if I wanted to buy it. And I was like, um, no, 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 because now I've already overpaid for it. So it kind of bothers me at times the, the, the nature of the beast, if you will. But I love my figures, no matter. So this one I really like. Also, it's kind of a grail. It's really cool. They did it right. The original Mark 21 I have on display um, up with my Iron Man 3. Um, check that. Way up there. I have them aligned in the way that they came out in Iron Man 3. I don't have a light up there. So I'm sorry about the quality being so poor. But over here on the left is the original Mark 21 Chrome. So I have them both. So welcome to the uh, collection or the world that you that are coming into it. It's a, it's a great fun hobby. With them being in one six scale, you really get quality that you don't get in the smaller scales, but they take up a lot of room. That's the disadvantage of it. So let's put these guys back. I know, right? Totally messed up. So I'm a little, a little upset at Sideshow right now. I believe them. I mean, like I said, the Mark 21 Chrome is the only way I could have got it. Was party. And I bought it, obviously. I wanted it. I paid for it. And I was happy that I bought it. Love it. And then, so I was doing the same thing with the Neon. And then, to find out, if I waited, I could have got it without all that. That really upsets me. That's... That's pretty upsetting. But I had an excellent transaction. Jake and Wong is who I bought it from, the new collector. And so I'm pleased with my transaction. That had nothing to do with it. And I accepted the amount that I paid for it because that's what I was on this and I was going to have to pay in order to be able to get it. So at the time, I thought I paid a good price for it. But... Now that I could have got it at a regular price, it's pretty upsetting. So where are we at? Mark 47. I did order the Mark 46 our concept. You better believe it. And looking at that, one of the um, comments that somebody said, I thought what they were saying, and so I discussed it for a bit, but it's not what they were saying. But I'll discuss it anyhow. One of the things that somebody had... Or, or, a concern, I guess, is that it's a straight-up repaint. Um, which, literally, this is a straight-up repaint. But in discussing repaints versus reissues versus different designs, so even though the Mark 47 and the Mark 46, so Mark 47, this one I have in my hand from Spider-Man Homecoming, and the Mark 46 from... Captain America Civil War, which is this guy here. So even though they're the same figure, same armor, it's not a repaint. Unlike my Mark 7s, the chromatic stealth one, that's a repaint. Because it doesn't exist in the movies. There's no Mark 7, black Mark 7 in the movies. There's no white Mark 7 in the movies. As of today, they're not. So those are repaints. These are not. They are because it's the same suit. But they're not because the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which both of these belong in, these are canon, meaning... They're real. They're real figures. They're real suits 
of armors that Tony wore in the movies. So that's when I don't consider it a repaint when it's real. Now, the Mark 46 concept, there are people that are considering that a repaint or a reissue. And it's 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 neither for two reasons. One, it's not a reissue because it's a different figure. Looking at it, I noticed four areas where there's differences. One was up here in the bicep. It actually has a different little cut. Now, the prototype figure could actually be different than what actually gets um, delivered to us. And if you were to compare photographs of many prototype figures, specifically like the Hulkbuster, because I was looking at that recently, the pictures of the, of the figure are different than the pictures that actually gets delivered to you, or the figure that actually gets delivered to you. So the four areas that I noticed that were different. The bicep has a different little cut. The thigh has a different little cut to it. There's another little um, panel here on the 46 concept. Uh, I don't remember where the other two were, but there were four areas that I noticed. Actually, oh, this forearm was different here. And I don't remember where the other one was, but there were four. And they were mining minor. For In all actuality, it literally looked exactly like this or or that except painted differently except for those four areas these two there's not even any areas that it's different um so the um maybe these might be different on these no even these are the same whereas i think they changed that out in the mark 45 was different but the 46 concept in this, they are different. So, needless to say, I'm, I'm getting it. Uh, let's see. So let's continue on with this guy. And I love my Iron Man figures. And it's kind of scary or sad thinking of the new movie that's coming out. What's going to happen to Iron Man? Iron Man obviously exists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Are they really going to do a Phase 2 and a Phase 3 without an Iron Man? Now, it might not be Tony Stark. There might be another person portraying Iron Man. But I'm really not looking forward to a world without Iron Man. That's it's kind of sad. It's going to make me cry. I don't want to cry. So I like this. I really like this. When... The Mark II Armor Unleashed figure came out. Oh, hey, I hate that I can't get these out of here. The Mark II, figure, Mark II Armor Unleashed figure came out. It came with a, a hollow helmet also. And then, of course, I made my own hollow helmet for my Mark 42. But I was extremely pleased when I seen this. One of the things I wish that they would finally get around to doing... And that is that Mark Seven, the open up one. Now it wouldn't really be a figure; it would truthfully, totally be a statue. And it's kind of neat having figures that you can repose. And I do pose them a lot. Some figures never get moved. For instance, that original Seven there. They really don't come out of there unless I'm replacing one with another. But it's fun to repose the figures. So the Mark 47, of course, he, he can do it without his helmet. So this is the collar piece that goes around the neck if you pose him without his helmet and then just pose the Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark head sculpt. And it is uncanny and amazing how well these look like the actors. I'm really impressed by the artists and the sculptors of these. And it's part of the fun of collecting these. When I was a child, there was these wax museums that you could go to and they would pay these artists to make these figures for these wax museums, they're life-size figures. So essentially I have my, my own wax museum. So I really like this empty helmet. Because remember the big scene in the movie was when he opened it up and he wasn't in there. 
And then, of course, it was really cool when Peter's having a n nuclear meltdown. And he's like, if you even cared about me, you'd be here. And out he steps out of the suit. Uh, that was really sweet. That was really cool. So I really enjoyed this. And like I said, I really enjoy my Mark II that came with that originally. There it is. It's open helmet. And then my Mark 42 with my own open helmet. And I didn't do anything to the inside. I literally just cut out the head of, uh, of one and put it in there. Because this was, uh, I'm displaying my Mark 42 as it's being put away in the Hall of Armor at his mansion in Malibu. So I really like this open helmet concept. I'm glad that they did that. That's why, that's why I made so many of these helmets with the heads. Because they won't, a lot of times they won't release a uh, headed helmet for whatever reason. A lot of times it seems to be if he didn't actually appear here wearing it now a lot of people don't like the little flame effects that come with the figures and I've bought extra flame effects for my Iron Man 3 display of how they're all coming out because I like that but uh, I've had heard collectors say that it cheapens it and makes it look cheap and I disagree I disagree completely Tony's got a lot, Tony's got a lot of sunglasses so here's his little blue sunglasses that we get here. And the little rocket forearms. And these are different than the Mark 46s. So I think they're more goldy. And little flame effects. Assuming this is for his feet. Let's have a look. Yes, they are. So, if you noticed on my Iron Man 3 collection up there, I've put flame effects on the bottom of the feet. And I've put them in the hands. Those figures did not come with flame effects. Not a single one of them. And uh, now I take that back. The No, not, a one, not one of those came with flame effect. No, I take that back. I don't think any of those did. Maybe some of them did. Don't remember now. But I buy the little flame effects for those figures. So I'm happy to see the flame effects here. Like I said, I like it. There are collectors that say it cheapens it, makes it look cartoony. I like it. So it's, it doesn't go in real easily. So I'm going to have to finagle that to get it to go properly in there. But uh, And also I'm going to have to determine how I'm going to pose him. I haven't put any thought of where he's going to go in the art of my collections. So what do we got here? Hey, Ruben. Getting in from Costa Rica. Beautiful. Why is this piece so expensive in the secondary market, you think? Yeah, I have no idea. Um, he's cool. With every um, advancement in the diecast figures, they get better and better and better. My Mark III diecast, in comparison to, for instance, these Mark 47s and Mark 46s, big, huge improvement. The Mark 42 versus the Mark 43. Even though it's a similar figure, they made a big improvement on the way that the, the hips areas work on the button release for the, the legs back here. So each one gets better and better. Now, these suits, beginning with the Mark 45, they started having what people refer to as the bleeding edge look to them. So, for instance, the 42 and 43... They still look like, like a suit. They still look like the original seven. They still look like uh, a, a piece of armor that he's wearing. You know? Whereas these, they look organic. They look like it's it's him. The arms are they look sinewy. They look like a muscle. It actually looks like 
he's not wearing the suit, but is the suit. Which, of course, we then see in the Mark 50, specifically, where the suit really is him. I don't know why that's gotten so expensive. Maybe because what happened was the limited availability of this. Hot Toys always gambles as to how many to make of a figure. And they may have thought, because, same suit, that collectors wouldn't buy this one as much as they did this. But Spider-Man was a, a really great movie, and I was happy to see that. I think Tom Holland did a great job with it, and that might be um, why they do that. I, I, did, I don't, you know, I have to buy my figures, and so I, I very rarely buy two of them. Um, there are times when I do. For instance, I own four Mark Sixes, and I don't know, maybe three or four Mark Fours. I bought two Yondus because I wanted to display one in Guardians of the Galaxy original Yondu version with the short helmet, and then bought the other one because I wanted to buy him with show him displaying with the larger, um, not helmet, but the uh, uh, his uh, mohawk or the arrow controller. I, I forget what they call it. But other than that, no, I don't buy two. I didn't buy two Mark 47s. And it's funny, I probably wouldn't have sold one if I bought two of them. Any, anyhow, it's weird. I, they're, I'm a collector. I buy them for myself. I don't buy them to resell them. There are those people that do, and I'm sure they make a tidy sum on that. And, and thank God for them, too, because whenever I buy pieces, or like this helmet, in order to be able to tear that helmet up, I had to buy a helmet. And I wasn't going to buy an entire Mark 42 just for another helmet. So I bought just the helmet from somebody who buys these to disassemble them and sell the pieces. Or when my Mark 7, the original Mark 7s have a bad elbow in them. And a lot of times the light will stop working because the wire in the, in the elbow in here, because the battery in the Mark 7 is here and the light is down here, the wire gets bent and it'll break. And so I've ordered another arm for that just so I could repair that arm. So a lot of times I will buy just pieces from people who buy these, just disassemble them just so they can resell them. And so I'm glad people do that. It's sad to see that happen to a figure, but um, there's purpose for it for me. Any figure that I regret buying or that I don't like anymore. In the Iron Man line or in the Marvel line, let me think about that because there are figures that I've, bought that I was like, oh, why did I buy that? For instance, this uh, Game of Thrones one that I unboxed last week. I was like, why in the world did I even buy that? Um, if I were to think about the Marvel Cinematic line, I don't believe so. Or like on my... Um, I like collecting these little droids, the Astromechs. And I just, you just seen me open up that box and it has a BB-8 and a BB-90. I decided not to go over that because I'm, I'm really wanting to open up this Mark 47. I don't really regret any of them. I'm, I'm really pleased with all of, uh, all of them. I'll tell you the truth. I don't think you can go wrong with anyone. A lot of times people say, which figure should I buy? There's, there's a personal preference to these figures where it gets to the point of it's more than just a figure. It's, it's an extension of yourself. For instance, a lot of people will talk about the Mark 17 Heartbreaker, which is still available to be bought brand spanking new from stores. Evidently, Hot Toys made a lot of them. And they'll say, well, this is an old figure. What do you think about it? Uh, should I buy it? By all means, buy it. That one probably is, and it's so funny because depending on what day of the week it is, it changes my opinion. It's still probably one of my favorite figures. That Mark 17 Heartbreaker, I really like it. And the Mark 24, which is the same thing, just a different paint scheme on it, I, I really like it. He's just a beefy, unique-looking figure, and you can still buy him brand spanking new. Go to Big Bad Toy Store. They'll, they'll ship it to you no matter where you live. And it, you can still get the thing brand spanking new. So buy the figure that you want. Don't buy a figure just because it's of scale. 
especially if you don't have the storage ability to be able to display all of them and you're going to limit your resources, you know, buy the one that you want, not just because it's a good price. Buy the one that you want. It, it may be a situation where it ends up being the only hot toy you ever buy. And so you have to ask yourself, did I buy this because I just wanted it because it's a hot toy or did I buy it because it's the figure that I wanted? For instance, I like the Star Boost too. It's one of the ones I forget about on occasion, but that white Star Boost really is a good looking figure. And I'm happy that I bought that also. It's, it's a neat one. They get displayed like all the way up there. I don't know how high that shelf is. Eight feet maybe? Seven and a half feet? It's up there. I mean, I really can't even see them anymore. Uh, I know that they're there and I can appreciate them, but I don't get to really play with them. They're, they're there and they get kind of forgotten. But I, like my Mark 40 shotgun, what a unique figure. What a really unbelievable design. And I, I hate that they, they get forgotten like that. Let's see. The Mandarin you have back there is underrated. The head sculpt is awesome. You know, I just bought him because he's on sale. I, I, I've been wanting to get him, wanting to get him, wanting to get him, wanting to get him. And he is really on sale. If you want to get a good price on a, vi on a figure, that Mandarin. And uh, I, don't know what, I, I don't know what else to do with him. He didn't really interact with any body. He really didn't interact with Tony. So I don't really have an interaction thing. And they never made a Killian figure, who truthfully was the bad guy. So if you want to get a good figure, a good price, the Mandarin, definitely. We've got the uh, Jenkin Wong, J-E-N-K-I-N Wong, W-O-N-G. I don't know um, if he would have a Mark 47 for sale. Literally, I just go to Facebook forums and to eBay is where I find the products I'm looking for whenever I try to find one. Mark 47 came out several months ago. So um, Jenkins would be the one to contact if you wanted to. I hope he doesn't mind me giving him shout outs. Uh, definitely if you wanted to find the uh, current figures. But I, I don't know what his resources are in regards to the older ones. He seems to be a newer collector. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to impose rules on what I... Yes, I know. Oh, my goodness. Yes, exactly. Limited space and money. It's like I, Definitely. And, and like I said, buy the one that you want. There are figures also that just never got released. And so you, you end up tracking those down. The Tony Stark in his racing suit, which is, is a requirement as far as I'm concerned. And there's two or three companies that make that. I think that's the very cool version of it. And you, you, as far as I'm concerned, you have to have it. And I, and I don't know why Hot Toys never made it. And um, I'm really pleased with it. Set some light on this here. I'm really pleased with it. And um, so being, you know, you don't necessarily have to buy a Hot Toys. You know, that just the body and the suit and, I don't know, maybe 100, 150 bucks. You can put one of those together yourself. And it tells a story, still. Do you think twice before buying or just proceeding to purchase the figure while thinking, buy now, regret later? Hmm. My wife would say that that's exactly what I do, is don't put any thought to it and just buy now and think later. Um, with Big Bad Toy Store, for instance, and I'm sure there's, you get the, uh, the Falcon Hanger, you've got... Uh, one sixth uh, Republic. You've got uh, uh, big ba uh, the bad ugly robot, whatever that one's called. There are other retailers out there other than just the, the distributors of like Toy Sapiens and and um, um, Sideshow. There's a lot of other companies out there. I just big bad toy stores where I do most of my purchasing. That's why I refer to them and they'll ship worldwide. But um, uh, I, I hate to say this, but you can order a product and cancel the order. I meant to do that with the Game of Thrones figure that I that I ordered, and I thought that I did. Evidently, I didn't. So I guess that's the one that I regret buying that I, that I bought is um, that one. Uh, I don't even know what her, she is. I've never even seen a Game of Thrones a television show. I don't have HBO. Um, so um, the, if the regret comes on you, as long as you haven't put a deposit on one, you can always cancel it. You have a deposit on it, you're gonna lose your deposit, and it's I think it's ten percent. So when you're talking about a figure that's four hundred, 
dollars or whatever, you're having to put down 40 bucks on it, you just lost $40 if you have a regret later in regards to things. You know what I mean? So, but what I have seen happen is figures totally sell out like in a day or hours, for instance. The Black Mark 7, this one, sold out in hours. And uh, I think you could still buy them everywhere through resellers. But at the day, in time when he first came out, this guy sold out in hours. He was, if you didn't order him that day, you didn't get it originally. And now you can. So um, there's always that fear that a figure will sell out and you'll just never be able to get it without having to pay an arm and a leg for it. So it's, it's the gamble, if you will. And I love this guy. He's really cool. There's so much subtlety to them, little things that you can barely see in the shifting of the color or the transparency of the suit. Really neat, really clever concept. And they talk about this figure when Tony's talking to that kid, which from my understanding, that kid makes an appearance as an adult in um, one of these upcoming movies. That's what I've been told. So when he's talking to that kid in, in Iron Man 3, they, we talk about the, the retro-reflective panels of, of making a suit. And so this supposedly was the creation from that. So it's movie referenced, but not movie, not screen scene. So that's how I justify that figure. Bucky Barnes. I think he sold out, didn't he? The new Winter Soldier with the, the dissolving arm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Self Mark 7. Yeah, I remember that. Sold out so quick. Regret not getting it now. Yeah. I, and I am very happy that I got it. And like I said, it's still out there. And I think you can get a really good price on him now. He's one of those love loss figures. So I'm really going over on my time, guys. I'm, I'm sorry to keep you so late. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, I don't know if I got all the way through this Mark 7 here. I think I did. I don't think there's anything I really didn't touch on. So I'll be back again next week. Um, same time, same channel. And um, thanks for sticking in with me. Thanks for stopping by. And I really enjoy this. And I'm a couple of videos I'm working on right now, like I said. I filmed all of my Mark VI with all of the comparisons, so I'm comparing the Shanghai Mark VI, the original Mark VI's, and the new Diecast Mark VI, and the King Arts 1 9th scale Avengers Gantry, which I recommend completely and totally, and what a great price if you want a Gantry. The thing is huge. I don't even know if it'll fit in a debt off. I've, I've measured it for you guys so you can see. I think it might, and it's a little difficult to operate but in my opinion, it truthfully is one six scale. I don't believe for one second that it's one ninth scale. And I talk about that in the video. And the Hulkbuster too. I've got the, the Hulkbuster videos that I'm working on, which will be done. They'll be uploaded probably in a couple hours. And the Mark VI I'll work on today and get those out. And I've, I'm going to go back to doing all the reviews like I used to do. Well, no, I'm not going to do it like I used to do. I'm just going to talk about the figures and do comparisons to other ones. So this is kind of like the unboxing, and the other one will be reviews. And I hope you guys like that. So thanks again for stopping in with me, guys. And I will see you guys on the next video. And I love every one of you. I love all my subscribers. Thank you for everything. You, you really motivate me. It's, it's a great hobby. I love doing it, and I love sharing it with you. And I have the opportunity to do this. Oh, I was going to go over this Daphne here. Let's talk about this just for a quick second. Fice and figures, man. I've got a thing I'm doing on the Fison figures. These little Scooby-Doo things. Scooby-Doo is such an interesting little video. She came with her purple dress and these little shoes, which really aren't her shoes, and um, her little hair thing and her stockings. And I've got a video I'm going to make on which Fison's do what as to which fison that you want 
to do in order to do what you need to do, specifically on ankles, colors, and shapes. So there's so many different Fisons, and they're, they're so difficult to, to figure out and navigate around, figure out which one to get. I love Fison figures. Love them. If you're kit bashing or making a figure that they, ever, they never made, that's the way to go. Get your Fison. I see there's something called Jowden, G-I-A-O-U figures. Don't know much about them, but they look someone to look into. So, all right. So thanks. We'll see y'all. Happy collecting.